Hey, Mark, fake banter for the intro. That's all I know how to do. Great. Good to be here. Welcome to Tuesdays with... Stories. Hit her in the face with a surfboard. And then the duck fell out of his bag. <laughs> Surf's up. And she didn't even flush. Knock, knock. Who's there? Mark Norman and Joe List. Yeah! This is Tuesdays with Stories, everybody. No, nah, that's terrible. This is supposed to be cheesy. My radio is spitting at me. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Keep them puppies going. Raw dog. Hey, folks. That was the start, I guess. We're here. We're, we're, we're back. It's Tuesday, Tuesday, and it's a beautiful day. Beautiful day, 72 degrees. It was 70. Yes, I went to the park yesterday. I was sweating my fucking tits off. I was laying out there. It's November. Same. Sweating. What the hell's I going mean, on? Biden, he, uh, he changed the, the climate. Yeah, well, there's climate issues, obviously, but um, I'm enjoying them right now. You know, it's like, what can I do? We had a great day yesterday. We missed you in the park yesterday. A uh, uh, hell of a hang. I, I saw the photos. You had a good crew, and a, but I, boy, I got I got a real, real doozy of a of a reason why I wasn't there. Oh boy! Well, you want to just jump into it, or what do you want to do here? Well, I haven't talked to you in seven months and a day, so I got I'm, I got to go way back. Same here. I mean, we recorded last time we recorded. I was in Seattle. I mean, it's a whole it's a whole new world. It's a new fantastic point of view, uh, whatever the fucking words to that song is. What is that when I, children, take your clothes off? Remember that? There was always that hidden message for the pedos or some shit. All good teenagers take off their clothes. That was it. That was it. Get I that think. clip. Yeah, pull up that clip, stick it in there, put it in my ass, and uh, it's, it's as true today as it was then. <laughs> oh, okay. Have you, have you gone back and looked? Because... Maybe it's uh, one of those mental fill in the blank things, but I hear it clear as clear as gay. Yeah, I mean the Disney movies all have those. There's sex in Lion King. He plops down and it says it in the dust. I mean that's clear. I used to pause it and you can just see it. And then there's the boner in Little Mermaid, and uh, you know the fist in uh, Ariel or whatever. I had bad improv skills there. I couldn't think of another movie. Well, it's hard to fist a mermaid. It's a lot of fin. That's true, uh, and they never Finn-ish. Hey, hey. well, you know, uh, I'm, a, I'm a Finn oh cell. Oh, boy. Uh, I'm going to fucking kill myself. But anyways, You're I fine. feel great. It was a great day in the, in the city yesterday. I mean, packed in Sheep Meadow. We've never had it more packed. Beautiful. Wild. I mean, great group. We're playing Can Jam. Ian Fidance is there. He was getting recognized. We had qu- what, quite a crew. I mean, packed in the park, and people were... Oh, it was it was it was quite a scene there. It was it was a beautiful day, beautiful moment, and it was really something. Lovely day. Who was Ian getting recognized by? The trannies out there uh, under the overpass, or were these fans? These were fans, and we we're playing can jam. So I was a few feet away, and I was going, "Hey, Joe List over here. What are you crazy? <laughs> Finance? Yeah. Come on!" Right. And, uh, I, and by the way, I'm with Louis. Louis was there. I'm what? like, "You got to be shitting me, Finance." And no love for, for me. I mean, Louis, I get he's a pedophile or whatever he is, but <laughs> I mean, come on. Are we wow. getting are we getting topped by finance? This is brutal. That's that's cuckoo bananas. I don't like that one bit. Uh, this town's gone topsy turvy comedy wise. Where where my priorities are out of whack and off. I mean, I was yelling my credits at them. I was throwing Tuesdays with stories T shirts with a cannon and uh, nothing. We stink. So by the way, what the hell's a can jam? That sounds like what happens in a in a prison shower. Oh, Can Jam is the best. I mean, first of all, I, I just want to say, I mean, Ian is one of my favorite ah. comics, favorite guys. Of course, he's getting recognized, yada, yada. But Cute y- kid. Y- you also, want a little... He looks like a cartoon, to be honest. You know, like you could spot that guy. I think he's in the game Guess Who. You, you, want, to, you want to get some love yourself, but Can Jam is fun. It's, it's, it's kind of like horseshoes or cornhole or all this shit. You got a Frisbee. And there's like a, a little, it looks like a trash barrel. In fact, someone threw trash in our can jam. But it's a little, ah. you know, bucket with a hole in it. There's a little sliver out of the front of it. And you throw the Frisbee and your teammate smacks the Frisbee into the, the can. Ah, that's fun. He, he jams it in the can. And if you get it in the slot, you win. But no one ever does that. If you hit the thing. 
And uh, it's quite a game. We had some epic battles, and people were getting competitive, and some people suck at it. And Ian and I were a team, and we were like, we were like Facebook. They wanted to break us up because we were too good. Yeah, those Jews, they don't like a Frisbee. Ranan and all them, they, they didn't grow up with it. They got a yarmulke, which is close, but no Frisbee well, in their childhood. Well, some of these guys, you have to protect them because, you know, like, I don't want to name names, but certain people are throwing it, and I'm like, let me stand over here in front of this family because one guy hit a family in the face like four times in a row. A Rosebud Baker's dog took one to the snout, and it, it was a bad scene. <laughs> well, cans, jam. <laughs> Sounds like a hell of a time. I wish I was there. I, w- I would have done that reference and uh, nobody would have gotten it but you. Yeah, it would have been fun. I would have said uh, Keanu Day or something. I, I don't know. I got, I'm, I'm off because I'm, I'm too happy. I got to be <laughs> miserable to do the pod. Well, you got you got a president now. The sun is shining. Silent Re is gone. Yeah, things are looking up. I got Silent Re up my ass. My, my throat is burning like my asshole on a Wednesday night, but... But still, I mean, you know, it's sunny, it's blue skies. I mean, I had a great hang yesterday and a good hang. Yet the day before, Saturday was a great hang. Sunday, we had great hangs. I had some great shows. I worked all weekend, and uh, I'm dying to hear about Cleveland. You're all over the fucking road here. I mean, I got I got a thousand things to, to shove in your, your pee hole. Uh, let's, just, let's just get cooking, because we got ads, we got uh, AIDS, we got a lot of stuff here, so... First off, I'm getting a lot of hog questions. Everybody's like, what's the hog saga? What's going on with the hog? What's the conclusion? We need, what's the, what do you need? What is that, uh, what is that thing they always say? Women need, not confirmation. Closure. Closure. Nailed it. Always be closure. So, hog was getting towed left and right. It was getting diddled. It was getting molested. People are stealing. Five bike covers in 2020. Five. Count them. Why do people say that? Wow. Count them. You can count it. I said five already. Why do you need to count it? I guess you go through. You go, there was the one in May. That was crazy. Ah. You were you were in May. There's the one in July. <laughs> Remember the October one? There was the right. Thanksgiving one. You know, so that, they got to count them that way, I think. I think that's what they mean. Maybe that's it. Well, they should have done that in Nevada. But either way, lost five bike covers. I'm getting up at the crack of jizz. I got a sleep cap on and a boner. I'm out on Sullivan Street moving the thing. You know, it's me and the hobos. He's collecting cans. I'm, I'm moving a hog. So I said, I put out some feelers. A two's gay out in Astoria in your neck of the jizz. He said, uh, bring it on over. I got a gay Raj. We'll put a cover on it. We'll close the, the fuel valve and leave that thing for the winter. So I said, you got it. But then, as you know... I broke the break off, some other things, and you were mentioning how loud it was. Yes. So I brought it in, and they go, holy shit, your baffle's broken. The baffle? Said, I'm, I'm baffled. What the hell are you talking about? You know. And he goes, yeah, you're, you're, you're basically your muffler is hanging off. It was about to fall off. It was shaking. like blah, 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 blah. So that's why it was so loud. Oh, it's probably because you were at the bath house. <laughs> yes. So I was like, I had no idea. like I re-welded it. I put a new baffle on. I got that puppy. I picked it up. It was like this. <sighs> Sound like a queef on wheels. I could barely hear it. It was a whisper in the night. This thing is so quiet. It's like an Asian woman. It doesn't speak. And so I said, okay, it's, it's, now it's raining. And the, the guy in Queens, the gay, he goes, I can only do it today. I, I have a job. I, I don't, you know, my life doesn't revolve around you and your dumb bicycle. I said, I understand, sir. So I pick it up at the, the shop. Second stroke in Bushwick, and I go, all right, boop, 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 Queens, 44-minute ride, because I have to avoid highways, as you know. This thing goes 40 on the, you know, on a good day. So, it's raining. I throw on the earbuds. I put on little talking heads. I hunker down. I got a jacket. I zip up, and I just whiz it on up there. Now, this is a freezing cold day. It must have been like 33 degrees out. And you know when you see the uh, the delivery guys with those big plastic mitts on their hands on the bikes? Oh, yeah, the bag hands. The bag hands, yes. She had bag <laughs> hands. So I was like, what's up with that? Well, boy, did I learn my lesson. I just said, fuck it. I'm going all the way. About 10 minutes into my 44-minute ride, the rain's coming down, the droplets, the freezing wind. My hands are beet red, and they're throbbing. They're going like, whoa, 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 whoa. I almost had hypothermia, but I said, I got to press through because it's too cold. I I don't want to stop. I just want to get it done. Finally get there after like 50 minutes of hauling ass. 
my hands were hurting so bad. I first of all, I, it was that weird thing where you can't feel them, but they still hurt. So I had to unzip my jacket, and it's that weird thing where your hands are numb, and I'm grabbing the zipper on the jacket, and you can see it happening, but you don't feel it. Isn't that weird? Numb, yeah, that's brutal. I mean, it sounds like my relationship with my dad. You can't feel it, but it still hurts. And, <laughs> I mean, your hands are going, whoa, 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 your boat. I mean, it sounds, you know, not a dream. But, yeah, you know you know me. I, I think I've mentioned it before. I have Raynads. I don't know Ooh. how you say it. Raynards. Raynads or Ray... Ray to Ray I got Ray Allen. I got I got some kind of Ray Raytard where your hands <laughs> they go numb fast. My my hands and toes, my extremities, they turn white and like bony and freezing immediately. It's like fifty degrees. I can't feel my hands, so I feel your pain. Uh, yeah, I don't this feel is it, whatever. stinging, stinging like needles. So I open the jacket, I put them in the armpits, I put them in my pants, and I had to like walk around the block because the pain was so bad. So all these old ladies, are, you know, it's a story. They're like. You know, some old Greek cunts. Like, what's up with this fucking weirdo? I've never seen him in the neighborhood before. It's very residential. And I'm just going, ah, eh, ah, ah. God, it hurt so bad. I did that for 10 minutes. Then I could finally get my phone out of my pocket. I call the guy. He goes, shit, we're at lunch. He comes by with his beautiful wife. They let me in the garage. It's so quaint. You know, these Queens people, you guys live well. You're, you're happy over there. Everybody over here has got oh, a hobo up their ass and a rat in their dick. You guys are, you guys, you know, you got garbage cans and a and a front door. Oh, it's fantastic. If we get a homeless guy in Queens, it's rare, but we just beat the shit out of him and, and throw him in the river here. I mean, nobody wants him around. I don't want you. <laughs> George, Jerry doesn't want to see you. Why don't you just drop dead? <laughs> That's the move. That's the way to live. It's beautiful over there. You know, you walk by a, a preschool, and you walk by an elementary. Kids are throwing a ball around, and, you know, there's a bully. He yelled at me, called me a homo. So I get back to Manhattan, the island, and Doug Key's on his way over to drop us off. He's going to pick us up to go to Atlantic City. Monopoly. What's that? Uh, that's a Bruce Springsteen song that someone else covered, and the cover was bigger. Was it bigger? The I don't cover know about was that. way. That's the one you know is the cover. It's uh, what is it? How's it go? I don't. Put your red dress on, do your hair up pretty, and meet me tonight I... in Atlantic City. Not only is the cover not bigger, I don't even know who you're talking about. I don't even know what you're talking about. It's who the covered band. It? The band. The band redid it. Really? Oh yeah. Give it a goog. This this one's way bigger. Are you sure? The band, I thought The Last Waltz was like 78. That song came out in 82. Springsteen wrote it. It, it sounded fun, but it was too... <laughs> he, he couldn't pull it off. It wasn't for him. And uh, so <laughs> the band covered it, and they they made it, they improved it. This is sacrilege. I, I mean, I don't even want to get into it. You're insane. I mean, the, the, the Springsteen version is the version, and you're insane. It's on his greatest hits. It's on Nebraska, 82. I don't know what's wrong with you, but we'll settle this another time. Keep Tell moving. You. Look Just it up. Just keep it moving. All right. They Look, play not, what Atlantic do you mean, look it up? <laughs> Telling you. They, they play it on the boardwalk, you know, on repeat. It's a little monotonous, if you ask me, but... They keep playing on repeat, and it's the band version, not the Bruce. And you think, hey, Jersey, hey, your guy, boss, band version. I don't know who's DJ in this city, but they should be shot dead and thrown into the ocean like the homeless f***ing, uh, oh, jeez, what am I saying? I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just saying this, this is the one that caught fire. Bleep that, Shelby. Go back and bleep. I got to bleep. We can't say that anymore. It's a whole situation. All right, all right. New president, Just new rules. Throw um, a bleep in there. <coughs> so, all right, but anyways, you go to Atlantic City with Doug Key. Hit me with it. Stick have, it in my butt. You, I'm horny over here. Have you been there? I've never set foot in Atlantic City. Don't do it. Don't go. It's Vegas with AIDS. It's run down. It's a shithole. There's nothing going on. I mean, look, I get it's a pandemic, and it was Halloween weekend, but it is just bummer town, like... There's no frills. The half the lights are like bzz, 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 they're they're buzzing. They're out, you know. And uh, the people are all fat and ugly. And uh, 
Yeah, it's just the water sucks. The beach sucks. It, it all. It's it's like um, Asbury Park if it if it was like uh, Down syndrome. It's just got nothing going on. The the casinos are all spread apart, and then in between it, if you want to walk to one, you gotta you gotta dodge a crossbow and a meth pipe and crackheads. It's it's brutal. That's one of those places. Atlantic City is like smoking. I've never heard anything positive about it since I was a kid. In school, they were like, whatever you do, don't go to Atlantic City. It'll turn your fingers yellow. You won't be able to breathe. You'll have birth defects. So I just never went. I mean, it's very similar. It just yeah. nobody's ever said anything pleasant about Atlantic City ever other than, you know, in 1975 or whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's rough. I mean, and, and all those smoking symptoms, they all have that. They're limping. They're in the rascal. You know, you know Vegas when you go to, like, Circus Circus, and you're like, ugh, this is the rundown one. Circus Circus would be... Uh, a, a paradise, a utopia in Atlantic City. Yeah, and I can't imagine it's gotten any better during COVID. I mean, it's oh, got to be God no. rough. So, but hey, we got we got one show Friday, two shows Saturday. It'll be fun. We'll get drunk. We'll we'll go to the buffet. We'll go to the beach. Like we'll make it work. I got Doug Key. I got the lady out there. So Friday rolls around nine o'clock show. One show. You gotta love that. Brutal. Doug goes up. He's getting heckled immediately. I go up. I got heckled from minute one to minute 39. Then they got kicked out. Then they got brought back in and then re-heckled. They got heck. They got kicked out and brought back in? This girl is shithouse in the front row wearing like a dental floss top. And she's just yelling, Woo! Threesome! Threesome! With, with her and her boyfriend. They throw her out. She starts crying in the lobby. Then they go, okay, okay, you psycho. We'll let you back in. Oh. Back to the heckle. But they're like, well, you got eight minutes left, so what's the difference? We're not going to kick her out again and, and you know disturb the show. So it oh. was brutal. Now here's the clinker. She's a psycho. She's going to town on me, yelling all kinds of crazy uh, whatnot and hoopla. So I go into my racial chunk. There's a table of bla- a black guy and a black lady front row. This guy's dying. He's like my one beacon. This guy loves everything. There's a table of three fat black women behind him, and they start leaving. And I go, what's going on, ladies? You guys, uh, you got two minutes left. Where are you going? They go, you're a racist. Go back and get your clan hood. I see your ass in Philly. You need to get your ass kicked. You come to Philly, we're going to kick your ass. And they're, they're walking out and saying this. And I'm like, what are you talking about? These guys are dying. They're like, fuck you. You're racist. You're racist. And I'm like, no, I want you to stay. If I was racist, I'd want you to, I'd be like, yeah, get out of here. You know, you, you, you black people. But she was just on one. And uh, I, I go to the black guy in the front, which I guess is kind of racist to be like, do you understand this? You're the same color as them. And he was like, Ah, don't put, don't bring me into this shit. <laughs> but they were pissed, and they walked out, and you know they're like, "Get your clan hood, come to Philly, we'll kick your ass." All this shit, and it was pretty, uh, pretty defeating. I was like, "Wait, what? It's jokes. What are you talking about?" But that's that, I guess. People are very quick to the clan hood. I don't, I don't get the clan, the clan. I'm in the clan. I, I mean, I, I can see if your jokes are insensitive. I, I, I saw. I, I don't want to get too into it and too inside baseball, but or critical of a comic. But Chappelle said that he's like, if you could, if you could put on a your clan hood, you could put on a mask. I'm like, so if you don't wear a mask, you're in the clan. Yeah, it's a leap. I mean, that's a tough equivalency. I mean, what's how many people are in the clan, by the way? Three uh, hundred. I know. What, I know. What are we talking here? Well, I get, I get it in comedy. You have to use extremes. Like, how many ISIS jokes have we made about a you know a Middle Eastern guy? So I get it, but if I was right, ra- I would go, yeah, yeah, N-words. I would just be letting it go. Like, you're already leaving, but I'm like, no, please stay. I don't want to hurt your feelings, but yeah, it was, uh, it, there was no turning that one around, and they were pissed, and they were really like, you, 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 you pissed me off so much that I had to leave with my other ladies, and we hate you now. And thank God they were like 60 because they don't blog and shit. Because, you know, you get a couple of bloggers going, then you get a, you start a fire online. But these gals, you know, they're, they like go to church on Sunday and, you know, have a cookout. Oh, gee, I got to hear these jokes. I, I want to be the, I want to, I want to get a little sense of what we're talking here. I mean, get your clan hood. That sounds like, 
It Either wasn't they're pretty. nuts or you're crazy. I don't know. Someone, someone's missing something here. Well, the other, the other two black folk were loving it, but I talked to Fat Chris Al, our, our in-house black, and he was like, I get the joke, obviously, but I get why people could be upset. It's got like some slave connotation. Uh, uh. I, the whole joke, I don't want to give away the material, but it's all about how we all, if we all hung out with each other, like different races, we'd get along better. The fact that we were so separate is what's hurting us, ironically. And I said, you know, you got a seeing eye dog. How about like a service brother where we just give you a black guy if you don't have any black people in your life? And she, I think, was just like, wait, what? Slavery? I'm like, no, no, no. The point is to make us mingle and and coexist. So I think that might have been it. Right. Also, I just want to add this. You're not an elected official. You're not presenting this as like, what if we did this? Of You're a comic. Of course, of course. But uh, also I had a joke about a, a virus called H1N word, and that might have done it. But again, ah. it, if I'm a race, I would just say the word. I'm, I'm saying N word to make it fun. And yeah, it's wordplay. Right. Well, what can you do? Yeah, yeah. They'll, I'm sure they're fine now. And but here's the uh, here's the the the, uh, the kook part is the uh, the bouncer was a black guy and he was like fuck them that joke's good I love it I thought you were great and when you get yelled at by a, a black person and called racist it's pretty devastating like, I had that thing in the green room where I'm like ah man I gotta make some changes what am I doing with my life and then when he says nah fuck him you're like that's all I needed thank you uh, other black guys into it we're fine and I was right back. Right. Well, you can't please all the people all the time. You got that right. And all those people hey. were at my show. Mitch Edward. Speaking of speaking of pleasing people, Tuesdays with Stories is brought to you by Away Travel. <whistles> Away, they're very good. They create thoughtful products designed to change how you see the world. They started with the perfect suitcase crafted with features that make travel more seamless. And now... When even the famil- familiar looks different, oh, I stink. Even when the familiar looks different, you can count on a ways range of essentials to solve real travel problems whenever you take that next trip. We both have away bags. I love it. You love it. I mean, this thing is a first class bag. If you're traveling, you're probably not traveling a ton, but you're going to be sued. I have a feeling Pfizer's got a fucking 90% accurate uh, or helpful, uh, whatever you call it vaccine coming out so yes. we're all going to be traveling up and down i miss traveling when i do travel i've traveled a little bit i use my away bag always all their suitcases are designed to last a lifetime these bags can withstand even the roughest of baggage handlers and that's us we're run. i mean we we're on cobblestone streets we're shoving it in the overhead we're overpacking because we don't want to pay for the uh to check your bag so we beat the shit out of these bags and they always work they're great stuff Overpackers, they added a built-in compression pad to help you squeeze all your bulky clothes in. You and I have a lot of bulky clothes, I can tell you that. Big bulk, butt plugs, dildos. I love Away. It's light but durable. It's got the great 360-degree wheels on it. This thing never breaks. I've taken it all over the world and back. And I can't tell you how many times that battery pack, there's a battery pack built in to to the suitcase. It's a smart bag. And that battery pack has saved my ass so many times. You know, you're you're playing Brick Breaker on the flight. Before you know it, you land. Your phone's dead. You got to get an Uber. Thank God for that battery pack. I love Away. Start your risk-free 100-day trial and shop the entire Away lineup, including all their best sellers at awaytravel.com slash Tuesdays20. That's Tuesdays20. Tuesdays are the number 20 at the end. So get on it. Risk-free 100-day trial. You can't beat that. Awaytravel.com slash Tuesdays20 and get your away bag today and get rid of that duffel. Chris Allen just texted. How about that? Ah, you know, he must have like, uh, heard the, the, the black signal was in the air. He's like Candyman. Yeah, yeah well, diabetes. All right, you you go, you go. I I, I got I had to get out that, uh, that racial rant and... I appreciate the the help. Yeah, that's uh, that's a bummer. It's not a good feeling, but um, you know, you're not for everybody. That's the way it goes. <clears throat> you yeah. gotta break eggs to make an omelet, or whatever they say. Yes, yes, um, and just great trip. We we rented bikes. We got oysters. It was Halloween. We made the most of it. We got shit faced. We uh, we did a queef in the hotel room. 
that I had to delete because we got drunk and did a queef, and it was me, the lady, and Doug, and it was so edgy, we had to delete it. Oh, Jesus. Yeah. Well, get on the Patreon, folks. There's some there's some great stuff on there. Speaking of the Patreon, hardcore stuff. And if we ever get to 3,500, I think. Yes. Patrons, we're going to do something special. We're going to do a little live stream for the patrons only. Yeah, YouTube. We'll do a live show. You can be in there. Yeah, YouTube live. You can ask questions. We can go gay. We can make out. We can blow, blow each other. It's going to be a hot one. So tell a friend, tell a partner, tell a neighbor, and... Tell it on the mountain. Yeah, it's going to be something. Uh, so last time we spoke, I was in Seattle having a great time. I was in the hotel because the Wi-Fi. And I, I just got to, I'll, I'll get right through it, but I got to say it was the happiest time of my entire life. Seven days in Seattle with my best pal, Derek, his wife, his kids, and uh, just an amazing time. And early in the week, we had some Wi-Fi issues. I had to do my podcast. I had to do, you know, Sarah had to do her podcast. I had a Zoom show, which was fun. And I think everyone was muted, though. I mean, I ate shit. It was brutal. <laughs> but um, anyways, I got there. the message afterwards being like, we liked it. Oh. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know if it was muted or my headphones broke or what. But I mean, I was talking to myself and just looking at blank faces. Uh, but that's, that's neither here nor there. I've been we there, had a great fatty. It's brutal. So we had a great time. So then we're walking around Alki Beach, which is one of my favorite places in the wide world. And I got this wild, you know, cum stain up my ass. And I said to Derek, why don't we go swim tomorrow morning? We just go in the ocean. Let's go out there and swim. And he goes, ah, maybe we'll see. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I, I don't know. That's a no where I come from. So I Google that night. I'm going, I'm going with or without him. I don't give a shit. And I Google swimming in cold water benefits, all kinds of benefits. You get, um, you know, cardiovascular and blood flow and I don't know, some other shit. Yeah, stress. Friends, with, friends with benefits. It's, it's good for the organs. It's a lot of good stuff. So I wake up in the morning and I'm waking up super early because I'm on East Coast time. Plus, I've been waking up early anyway. So I'm waking up at 615 plus the kid. It's a very farty house. Everyone just rips ass, which is fun. Yeah. Yeah. The kids, I love kids that think farts are funny because you do like a, you you do like a Perry or you stretch your foot out because they don't know any of the fart gags. Right. You can do pull my finger. You know, you take your glasses off and fart. I show them my dick and fart. It's all it all kills. Well, you're the fart Richard Pryor. You get to you get to break the mold and break wind. Exactly. I mean, it, it was amazing. So. Uh, we're all farting. I wake up. I go in the bedroom and I go, "Hey, what's going on?" And he goes, "I'll tell you what's going on." We're swimming in the ocean. I'm like, yeah, we cheer. And we get the kids going. We get his wife going. We put on our shorts. And, and I'm nervous because I got rain ads and uh, a small dick already. So, I, you know, you go in the water and you, you, it's freezing. Yeah. It's like 48 degrees that day. And we go, fuck it. We'll just we get a bunch of blankets and towels and the whole thing. We drive down to the beach, and I, I'm getting nervous. My heart's pounding because my anxiety starts going. I'm like, what if I have, uh, you know, what's, what's it called when your fingers fall off? Hypothermia? Frostbite. What is it? Hypothermia. Hypothermia uh -huh. and frostbite. Yes, hypothermia is the one I was actually looking for. Frostbite, hypothermia, and then you always have that moment like on roller coasters, they're like, don't ride if you have a heart condition. You're like, what if I have a heart condition I don't know about? Like fucking John Ritter died on set at, you know, Who's the Boss 2 or whatever the fuck show it was. Oh, God, that's terrifying. Because you hear all these stories about people that die when they're 48 and they're like he had a heart valve nobody knew it was a whole thing come and knock on our door that was the mt hey we're trying to get in so i go down there and it's like a beautiful day but it's it's cold and we go down there we're all excited and, and he's done the polar plunge on new year's day and stuff so he's like you gotta have flip-flops because your feet will feel like you know knives or all this shit whatever and then I start doing it on like, I'll do it on Insta Story. We all need content. And he didn't want to be in the video. He's got a job and everything. I get so it. So I'm like, all right. So we go down there and the kids are there and they're like, you're crazy. You know, it's fun because you have little kids that are like, this is nuts. Uncle Joe's crazy. He's going to swim in the ocean. Fun we uncle. go out there. I'm Funkel. I'm Funkle Joe. Yes. And then so we go out there and right as we're about to step in, we look over and there's like 75 elderly people just swimming laps. <laughs> They're just, they got like the little fucking rubber hats yeah. on, like, like, you know, Harry from Jaws. And they're just swimming back and forth. Then you look on the beach, there's like 40 more people in bathing suit. They're just talking. Ah. 
And we're like, I feel like an asshole because I'm over here going, we're going to do it. And I got the ego. I want people to like gather around being like, you're crazy. Right. And so we literally run in. We just jump in the water, get wet and come running back. And we're like, oh, <laughs> like little girls. And I come like, I got the flip flops on. I'm trying to hold them on because I got city feet. Right. And we run back and his wife's not impressed. The kids, they're not even watching us. They're building a sandcastle <laughs> over here. And you just see all these, like a whole group of polar bears, whatever the fuck they're called. There's like 60 of them. And they're just looking at us like, ah, you fucking losers. Ah, that, you, how you know old are these kids, by the way? Sorry. Eight and four. Okay, okay. So they weren't impressed. They didn't give a shit. We put our towels on. And it, it, it took the, it was fun and exciting, but it took a lot of the excitement out. Because I thought, we're going to be nuts. We're going to be these crazy people down on the beach. Totally. And nobody gives a shit. There's a whole gang of them over there. And you just kind of go, all right. And like his wife is like, okay, you all set? Can we go to get some breakfast? And you're like, all right, fine. But it was still a thrill, still exciting. And then uh, we got some photos and some video or whatever. But uh, it's a good way to start the day because it's quite a whoosh. They say that. All these smart people, these you know, motivational cum guzzlers, whatever it is, they always say, take a cold shower because your day, you've had the hardest thing about your day out of the way and you're invigorated. It feels nice. I was doing that at the beginning of quarantine, but <clears throat> uh, I remember when I was a kid, I had this memory of my mother would give me a bath when I'm, you know, 13 or 14, nothing crazy, but sure. my mother would, she'd, she'd bathe me and, uh, you know, my dad would be in the tub with me and my sister and my uncle and would all fuck at the end when we were clean, but it's a big tub. My, my <laughs> mother, Taft, my mother would take the fucking, like, whatever, Shut like your a, mouth. some kind of kitchen, uh, <laughs> What's the kitchen thing? It's like a big jug with measurements on it. Oh, uh, a knife, a kitchen knife. Wait, oh, a measuring cup. No. It's like a measuring cup, but it's huge. It's like a big bowl. She had a lot of jugs, my mother. Yeah, big jugs. Uh, but anyways, it was a big kitcheny jug, and I, at the end, she would do my hair and, and dump the water on my head to spritz it out or whatever. Sure. And I would say, surprise me with a cold one. Ooh. And so she would, without me noticing, get the water ice cold, and I'd be anticipating at some point I'm going to get hit. It was like um, I won the Super Bowl. Like, uh, you know, I got a Gatorade bath. Wow, what a fun kid you were, and what a fun mom. My mom, if I said surprise me with a cold one, she'd go, uh, all right, here's a beer, you fag. You know, I, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't hit me with cold water. That's too much work. Well, I mean, she was sitting in the tub. I'm in the tub. She's naked. I'm naked. And it was fun. So <laughs> I'd be waiting, and all of a sudden I'd go, whoa! And get hit with the cold water. It was exciting. I was like, all right, well, hit me with the warm one. You got to warm me up. And it was quite thrilling. It was like a special memory, you know? That's touching. That's touching. That's special needs. And uh, boy, your dong must have been in your asshole by then. That's uh, that cold water. It will really shrink the turtle. Well, also, I'm like, I'm four years old at the time. So my, my dick was already, you know, teeny. An acorn. Yeah, yeah. I get it. Wow. But, uh, boy, what a fun little memory. It was a fun memory, and uh, Alki Beach was great. And we went out to breakfast, and when you have, like, wet hair and the salt on you, and it just feels good. It's exciting. Yes. yes, the wet air and the wet skin with the salt. Yeah, there's nothing better. and you, you feel awake. But I really did. You got, I got no love. I wanted people to be like, you went swimming? That's crazy. You must be insane. I'm like, that's not it. I, I was on The Tonight Show, too, and they were like, oh, my God. But yeah. <laughs> nobody gave a shit. Yeah, it's tough. These, I mean, those old people out there, they're probably like 104. I think if you do that every day, you're, you're uh, immortal. Yeah, and I was thinking about, I guess when you actually swim laps, your body adjusts to the temperature, and then you're just working out. So right. I think they're like, they're like, you know, sweaty or whatever afterwards. Ah, damn, yeah. Those polar bears, we're just bipolar. No fun. We, we stink. These but anyways, kids, that these, was fun. These kids are hard to impress these days, you know? You, you almost got to have a, like a million TikTok followers or something. I could suck my own dick and they'd go, ah, what, what have you done for me lately? Well, the young kids are fun because they're not quite at the TikTok-y thing yet. And it's amazing how many of the things that they'll be like, you ever heard of uh, Itsy Little Spider? And I'm like, Itsy Little Spider? Of course I know it's a little spider. Get out of here. Show me something new, you fucking loser. Yeah, when are they going to make up some stuff? You know, we, 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 these one kids like, hey, yeah, Robin Hood, Batman smells, Robin. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, that's hack. That's like 1840. <laughs> They're hacks. I mean, the kid, all she wanted to do was watch Adam's Family, and I thought there was like a new Adam's Family. It was the 1993 fucking Angelica Houston Adam's Family, which, by the way, fucking stinks out loud. No. That movie blows. Come on. It stinks. Stinks. Holds up. 
holds up. It, it didn't hold up then. It held down then. It's holding my life down. Wow. I think I saw it in the theater. I, my, my jaw was on the floor. Plus, uh, more tish. I don't think Angelica Houston's attractive, but in that in that vibe, I was into it. And then Wednesday turned out to be a smoke show. Big what? forehead on that whore. What's her name? Christy Yamaguchi. Richie. Um, Richie, yes. Yes, I'm reaching. Uh, oh, we got another ad here. Let's, let's knock that puppy out. Speaking of uh, boners, <laughs> this is the best in the biz. Tuesday's story is brought to you by Sheath Underwear. Oh. We love old Sheathy. Yes, Sheath Leisure. Uh, I love Sheath. It's got that sexy pouch. It's got the sexy feel, the sexy fabric. It's got a great elastic waist, and it just cradles the twig and berries, the junk, the breakfast, the, the nuts and bolts beautifully. It just holds it there. It's got a great flap that you can get your hand into to urinate or get a beach, but the flap doesn't open. I, I have those underwear, some Fruit of the Loom nonsense, where the dong will just pop out and hit the zipper. It's brutal. You don't want dong on metal teeth. No, you don't. Especially braces. That'll get you in trouble. But yeah, it's supportive. It looks hot. The ladies love it. My gal's always a always a, a Twitter when I throw on the sheath underwear. Uh, it's just made by an army soldier named Robert Patton during his second tour in Iraq. So it's all Americana. Support the veteran-owned indie company whose founder is a Tuesday himself. And a big comedy fan. This guy gets it. Now you can get it. Tell him what to do there, fat man. Go to sheathunderwear.com and order with promo code TWOSGAYS to get 20% off your first order and Sheath Underwear's 100% money back guarantee. That's sheathunderwear.com, promo code TWOSGAYS with a G. Support this show by supporting them. Get Sheath Underwear and let's support... Oh, I fucked up the last part. He'll forgive me. You got Get it. sheath underwear and let them support your balls. And support the troops. This guy's a troop, for God's sakes. You got that right. Who knows? We could be attacking uh, China soon. <laughs> Woo, Han. All right. Now I got to tell you about a real excursion. Hit me with it. I'm excited. I love an excursion. I, I just, I, I, I'm in good spirits. Just throw everything you got at me. I'll put it right on your face. And this, this is an old Tuesday's throwback here. This story. This has got layers and travel and and uh, layovers and layaway. Here we go. All right. Just gotta give a shout out to Fat Chris Al. And we had a great weekend in. Cleveland at Hilarities. Cleveland's underrated town. I love Cleveland. I think I turned you around on the big Clee. And uh, just the, one of the one of the great clubs, Sam and Nick, they take care of you. Uh, they give you a baseball. If you sell out the shows, they give you a baseball bat with your name on it, engraved. It's so weird. Remember, I, they gave me one earlier in the year, and I had lost it because I couldn't take yeah. it through customs. Yes, that was frustrating. So they heard about that, and now they showed me the bat, and they put it in a big, fat envelope and sent it to the house. Yeah, you changed the policy because that's how they did it for me. They showed it. It had a sock on it, which was cute. Yeah. And by the way, I play with the bat every day, all day. I have it in my hands during meetings. It, it, people feel threatened because I'm like on Zoom meetings holding a baseball <laughs> bat. I've never don't have it. I, it's it's trusty. It's my guitar. It's my baseball bat. It's my dildo. I love this thing. It's gold. But yeah, I, the same deal. They showed it to me. They're like, we're not going to have another Norman on our hands. And then they mailed it. So... You changed the you're you're like you're Rosa Parks. Oh yes, there you go, the bat of the bus. So, just a great weekend. One of those weekends where you do the shows, you sell some merch, sold out of merch. Chris Al sold like a, he probably made five grand in merch. He's got those shirts that everybody loves. He killed. I had a hot one, new material, and one of those weekends where after every show, they're smoking, we're smoking butts and weed and drinking in the green room till three a.m. Just talking comedy. Who do you hate? Who do you love? Who's a piece of shit? Who who comes here and you look forward to? Who's good? Who sucks? All that. Just just the the old days. A little touch of normalcy. Sure. The new normal. Mark normalcy. So uh, great weekend. Took us out to eat. Had some pierogies. We went to Hofbrau. Had some day drinking. The whole thing. So then I look on my calendar. Go. Oh, what's what's going on on Sunday? I got to get back to New York. Got some shows on Sunday. Uh oh. I got a show at 3 p.m. on Sunday in New Jersey. Oh, you, you think, ah, New Jersey, I'll land at noon, throw my bags in, bang the lady, take a path train out to Jersey. How far can it be? Hoboken, Jersey City, what are we talking here? Swedesboro. 
Swedesboro. You ever heard of it? Maybe, but I not. It doesn't click in my my brain. No one's heard of it. I give it a goog. I map it. It's about thirty eight hours into Jersey. It's it's basically in Pennsylvania. So I go, what the hell is this? So I hit the guy up, and I go, hey, what, what's the deal with this Swedesboro? Because it's at 3 p.m. It's on a farm. It's a farm gig. Farmersonly.com. So he goes, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You got to take an Amtrak to Philly. Because he goes, you don't have a car? I got have a car. I got a Bieber, but that thing won't make it outside of Hoboken. And he goes, yeah, yeah, you got to take an Amtrak to Philly, and I'll pick you up. I'm like, Amtrak, oh. so you want me to fly into New Jersey, into Newark, go home, say hello, Get on Amtrak, go back to Philly. He's like, I guess that's the only way if you don't have a car. And I was like, so the gig's at three. This ain't no eight o'clock or like a normal gig. So I go, ah. So I had to change my flight into Philly. Okay. Now, you think, hey, Cleveland to Philly, that's what, 20 minutes in the air? It is, but it's last minute, so all the good options are gone. So I have to fly into Chicago, four hour layover, oh. then fly into Philly. And I get into Philly at 2.15. The show's at 3. So I was like, Jesus. Jesus. And also, the flight's at 6 a.m. or whatever it is. So that's a kick in the pants. Because, you know, you know, after a weekend, you just want to go home and put your feet up. For sure, yes. So I just suck it up. I go, all right, I'll get up early. I'll get up at fucking 4.30, get to the airport for 5, get the flight at 6. But, of course, we, uh, we end up drinking all night uh, on Saturday night. And I got... Ten seconds of sleep, just eye closed. Whoop, boop, 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 boop. Hey, your car's here. What are you doing? Hurry up. Everybody hates you. Your parents don't love you. Like, come downstairs. Oh, jeez. All right. So half an hour of sleep, hung over, get on the flight, go to Chicago, try to take a nap. Uh, by the way, I watched the Chappelle uh, uh, monologue, monologue in the airport in Chicago. Just moving. Just that whole thing. Like, sorry, no, Lauren. I thought this was a comedy show. Plus, I was all travely and hungover and no sleep. It was moving. It was touching. Okay. You hated it? Uh, maybe we'll do a Patreon. We'll talk about it. Now nah, yes. we're talking. <laughs> 3,500. The short, short answer is yes. <laughs> uh, what about that, that woman joke? With, well, we'll save it. We'll save it. About the, 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 the wage gap or whatever? That was a great joke. Yeah. I... I so if we can digress, I just think there's a lot of like, well, I thought this was a comedy show. We got a woke crowd. I'm like, is it possible the joke wasn't great? Sure, sure. Because I'm like, I think there's a lot of go to that. Whoa, I thought this was must be uh, too hot under the collar for you folks. And I'm like, ah, I didn't laugh. I'm not woke. All right, all right. Well, we definitely got to do a, a queef about this, but we'll do a whole queef. Another day, another dollar. So a little long, if you ask me too. But sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so you prefer the Bill Burr one? I preferred the burr, yes. Okay, okay. Well, now I'm I'm intrigued. You're tickling my my taint here. All right, Patreon. so I'm in Chicago, layover. You know, you try to sleep, you can't sleep. You get a smoothie, you, you go cry in the bathroom, and then boom, land in Philly. He picks me up. Every I'm loopy. Everything's all wacky. I haven't showered. Uh, he picks me up in his truck. Eddie, great guy. We drive out to a farm. We are in the middle of nowhere. It's a sunflower farm. They sell sunflower seeds in the middle of uh, who knows where. We show I, up. There's 300 people in lawn chairs staring at a stage. It's literally on the bed of a tractor. So he goes, hey, have a couple beers. Have a Philly cheesesteak. And I go, okay. I drink some beers. Eat a, eat a cheesesteak. Guy goes on. He's funny. The opener's funny. Then I go on. And you're just so out of it. The, there's a bee flying here. This guy's toothless. He's got a camo hat. That's a cornfield, and you're just trying to get through it. He's like, "How much?" I was like, "How much time?" He goes, "Do a full hour." I go, "All right." And half Jeez. of it's bombing, half it's working. I, I I commented on a bunch of kids, so they still have hymens. It got weird, <laughs> but so I get out of there. I tell the host Jake, Philly guy, very funny. I should know his last name. He goes. I looked up your Amtrak. You can only there's a six o'clock because I still have two shows in New York at eight. Oh my god! In Brooklyn, ah! So I your scheduling is appalling. The who? Your scheduling is appalling. It's appalling. Three shows in different states on the day you fly home. Horrible. And one's at three p.m. in in another country. Basically, I, I got. I just see an open calendar and I just yeah, fill it up. 
but I don't think about sleeping and food and and uh, lifestyle and you know anything. So get off the tractor. I jump in this guy's car. We go to the Amtrak in Philly, the 30th Street station. I go up to the Amtrak guy. I go. What's the next train in New York? He goes, you got a 615. And I look at my watch. It's like 604. I'm like, all right, let's do it. How much is it? He goes, 200 bucks. I go, 200 bucks for an amp? I could have flown there. And he goes, supply and demand. But there is oh. a 7 o'clock for 50. What is that? It's 100 miles. 200 bucks to go 100 miles? I, You're going to be shitting me. Exactly. I drive my bike 100 miles. But the se- but I thought I heard your 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 uh, small mouth in my head of just like ah treat yourself you know otherwise you got to wait at the Amtrak another forty five minutes and you get in at eight thirty and your show's at eight. Yeah, I mean two hundred bucks in the grand scheme of things is not much, but I mean two hundred bucks to go a hundred miles is absurd. Absurd. I mean the gas money for that would be six bucks. Ah, I should have taken the bolt. Yeah, this is this is this is goofballs. I think you need to buy another vehicle. <laughs> Get a nice Civic or a Chevy Spark or some bullshit to beat on. You know, you got your Beamer for chicks. You take them pleasure cruising. You got your motorcycle for spots, and then you get a nice, a nice, nice. What do, you, what do they call it when it's called uh, something? Uh, ah, what's that word? Oh, uh, Reasonable or reliable? Uh, a or? daily driver? No. Daily driver. That sounds like a dating site. <laughs> No, like a, 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 a some kind of uh, casual. It's like they say it was shoe, walking a, around uh, shoe, a tennis shoe, a slipper, flip flop, something sensible, sensible, sensible. Get a nice sensible vehicle. There you go. Get All a right, sensible yeah, that's car. Not bad. I like I like a good beater. I want to park that thing half on a curb. You know, kick it shut with my hip, spray paint a swastika on it. Whatever it is. Exactly. A, sen- a beater can be sensible. You can have a beamer and a beater. Woo! Egg beaters. All right. So, land in New York, 200 bucks up my asshole. Now, here's the clinker. We're on the Amtrak. You know, you do the thing. Everybody does it. It's late. We're cranky. Everybody gets on. Everybody thinks, maybe we'll go left. Everybody's going right. We'll go left. Oh, there's the coach car. There's the quiet car. There's the snack car. Whatever it is. Everybody's got their little system. Get on the Amtrak. We're all walking down. And, you know, everybody wants the two-seat. They want the seat. They want the seat for their shit. Right. That's how it goes. That's the American way. We've all agreed on it. So, you know, you, you just keep walking till you find your twofer. Find my twofer. Sit down. <sighs> I get a moment here. I'm on the Amtrak. I got an hour and a half. I'm going to take a little snooze. Still got two shows to go. We're almost home, baby. Throw my bag up in there. Sit down. But I'm so dehydrated because I've had no sleep and I drank a couple of IPAs on the farm. So I go, all right, let me get settled. Plug my little charger in, get my phone some juice, uh, you know, get my ticket beeped from the guy. Finally, once we've been on the train 10 minutes, I put my ticket in the little back uh, slit there from the chair, you know, and I get up and I go get a bottle of water. Get up, go get a bottle of water, come back. Seat's taken. Uh, now, what do you Forrest do here? Gump. What's the etiquette? Because it's his fat hillbilly chooch. He's on the phone, by the way. And I go, ah, I got the tray, you know, the little paper, uh, uh, the little cardboard tray with my drink in it and my M&Ms. And I'm like, ah, I was sitting there. And he's like, huh, I'm on the phone. And so now he's just sitting there doing this shit. Yeah, man, I got, I'll tell you what, I, oh. I think Biden's going to... We still got to get that recount. We got to recount it. That's going to change everything. It ain't over yet. He's still in the house, you know. And I'm like, ah. So I go, I was sitting here. And he's like, I, I, you know, I don't know that. And I go, ah, here's my ticket. And he goes, yeah, you know, what do you want me to do? You weren't here. And he's got his dumb, you know, those weird bags that, that guys carry that have their strings and it's just like a pouch and he can, oh, or, you know that I thing? I hate those. I hate the string pouch. What? It's effeminate. It is effeminate, it, but tough guys have these for some reason. I don't know what it is, but he had one of those on the seat. So I go, well, I got to sit down here. And he goes, ah, oh. so he moves it a little and I'm just sitting there. Now I got this dumb bag jammed in my ass and I'm eating my M&Ms and drinking my water like a little rat. And I see this girl on the other end across the aisle look at me like what a pussy and it pissed me off i don't know if she was actually thinking that but it, it, that's how i registered it so i go move the fucking bag i was pissed 
And he goes, and he puts the bag on his lap. I didn't say fuck, and I said, can you move the bag? Jesus, I'm a human being. Puts the bag on his lap, and he's talking on the phone, so I can't really yell at him. And eventually, I just, I kept thinking, what is the deal here? What do you do here? Because he's right, there was nobody in the seat, so he took the seat. Yeah, sure, my ticket was there, but is that a, is that a holder? Yeah, you got to do a leave behind, a hoodie, a shoe, something. I know. I mean, I, I, I didn't I gotta leave behind. say, I got to say, with no leave behind, I kind of get it. You go, hey, it's an open seat. I sat down. I get it too. I that's that's what I figured. So I just sucked it up and I I got up. I gave him a dirty look, and then I walked uh, walked down and found another one. But it was pretty uh, crushing. And then when the train landed in New York, I had to run back through three cars to get my bag. I left it up there. Ah, uh, well, first of all, I hate this guy. I hate anyone talking on the phone. I hate a string bag. I hate a fat guy. I hate it. Everything he's got going on, I'm hating. It was all bad news, and it doesn't help the anger, you know, because if it was a nice guy going like, ah, sorry, man, you, there was no one here. I don't know what you want me to do. I get it, but he's on the phone. He's a, he's a douche. It was all bad. I think he was a DJ. I don't know. Something was up, but I got my bag. I go straight to Brooklyn. Shows are great. Tuesdays are at the show. Took some photos. Come home. Ah, we're good to go. Good to be back. Good to be home. If you can believe it, Mark and audience, we have another sponsor on this show. You got that right. And it is Native. Native Deodorant, who just sent us another uh, thing. Did you get your stick? I got nothing. No, oh, she got a stick coming. I'll share mine with you. I'll bring it over next time I see you. This, they no sent stick. me candy cane. Candy cane deodorant. Come on. Just in time for the holidays. I am loving this deodorant. I'm putting it right on all my crevices. The holiday season is right around the corner. We're all getting into the spirit by indulging in the sights and sounds and scents of season. That makes sense. One thing I made sure to do was update my native collection with their candy cane holiday scent. I think you're going to love this. I'm using it. It doesn't, it sounds, you're making a face. It sounds weird. When I first opened it, I thought candy cane deodorant. I took a whiff. I love it. I put it on. I surprised my wife. She came home and I go, give, give me a whiff. See what you think. And she's like, Oh, my God. I mean, she was soaking wet. Her tits fell out. She couldn't have been ex more excited because you know what people want to do with candy canes? They want to suck on them and eat them. You got that right. And so that's what this is going on. Native deodorant is an all-natural deodorant. It's safe and effective, the perfect addition to your daily routine this holiday season. It makes a great gift. Native deodorants don't just block odor better. They're made better. Native has ingredients you've heard of, like coconut oil and shea butter. It's also vegan and never tested on animals. Perfect stocking stuffer. Mark, tell them how to get this stuff. Love the Native. My lady loves it. Now that you're talking about this candy cane stuff, I am on board. Give the gift of Native by going to nativedeo.com. That's nativedeo.com slash Tuesdays. Or use promo code Tuesdays at checkout and get a whole 20% off your first order. Pretty good. Make sure you order before December 7th to get your products in time for Xmas. That's nativedo.com slash Tuesdays. Or use promo code Tuesdays at the checkout. Native deodorant. Take care of your body. Merry Christmas. Hell yeah. Happy <clears throat> holidays. Can't believe it's the holiday season already. Thanksgiving's like two weeks away. Oh my God! I know. I'm going to. I'm going to Nola for that. That'll be fun. Just a little change of, of uh, race. Yeah, crazy times. So I, I got to just touch on Hit Halloween me. a little bit. I was out there, so that we went swimming in Alki the morning, Halloween morning, which is fun. And then you know everyone they got the kids, and that's the reason I went to Seattle to experience a little Halloween because <clears throat> when you don't drink, you're older. Halloween, there's not much going on for you. Yeah. If you're boozing or you're single, you're trying to, you know, fuck a nurse or whatever. Sure, but, healthcare. But, uh, you know, it's not eventful for me. I watch movies or whatever the hell. So I decided, hey, we'll go to Seattle and experience Halloween with the kids because they're right in the thick of it. Oh, eight yeah. Eight and four. Oh, yeah. And Did they dress up? They dressed up. My niece was Wednesday Adams. She looked amazing. She's obsessed with the Adams family. She had the wig, the thing, everything. Although... Like seven people were like, are you RBG? Ah. I love RBG. And you're like, RBG? Get out of here because it's Seattle. They're all like, it's, it's super woke, the whole thing. She's got a black wig down to her ass. <laughs> and she's like looking spooky. She has black and white striped leggings. Ugh. Yeah, RBG, I'm, a, and I'm, you're a, like, I'm on the Senate or whatever. I'm a judge. That's my thing. I'm I'm four. I'm eight. What are you talking about? Yeah, next week I'm going as uh, you know Harriet Tubman. What are we doing? <laughs> if, I, 
if I saw an eight-year-old dressed up as RBG, I'd throw my hot coffee in her face. <laughs> you you got to be that shitting right. me. I mean, <laughs> hey, I love RBG. Fantastic. Good for you, lady. You know, thanks for holding it down or whatever you, you do. I mean... I, I'm not. I, I don't do a lot of judge following. Yes. Who's dressing as a judge? Yes, I mean Judge I mean, Judy. Okay, at least she's fun. I get that. that. Uh, judge Reinhold would be better than. I mean RBG. Judge, get Dredd. out of here. Get out of here. What, what is this new thing where we got to pretend to give a shit about these uh, old, super old people? RBG on Halloween. Get the fuck out of here. She's Wednesday Adams, and yes. uh, she looked great. But that was only a couple people. I exaggerated a little bit. But again, it's Seattle, so who knows. She was Wednesday Adams, and then uh, my nephew Joey, same name. He was Chase from uh, what's it called? Meridian Not Blues Clues. Bank? It's, it's a it's a Paw Patrol. Paw. It's dog dog cops. They're like little dogs that are police. Paw Patrol. It's it's adorable. They're Kinda, really fun. Is it like a McGruff? I think it's like McGruff. I, I got to tell you, I didn't watch an episode. I just saw him dressed, and he's got a little hat with ears, and he's got a. A brown tail that looks like a shit coming out of his putt. I had a lot of laughs about that. I don't know if I'd want to go as a cop in Seattle. That doesn't seem uh, very popular. Well, I think it was it's popular. It's it's Paw Patrol. So I think a kid can like a cop. That's what's interesting. Yes, kids are dumb. You're allowed to if, be dumb. If you're 30 and you're like, I love the cops. I'm, I'm a cop, baby. People are like, fuck you, you piece of shit. But if you're six, they're like, that's great. Good for you. It's true. Kids can, can say all lives matter. And everybody's like, oh, he doesn't get it. Oh, totally. A three-year-old's like, don't all lives matter? You'd be like, my kid's got wisdom. But yes, if the dad I, says it, you're like, you're a piece of shit. I have a bit about that. I don't want I don't want you to see me doing that and think I took it from you. Oh, sorry. Yeah. It, it, but anyways, they can do no wrong, these children. I mean, I guess they could. I mean, he could say, he could point and say the N-word, but you know, he's got good parents. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, he's he likes to listen and regurgitate what he listens to, you know. So he was sweet as pie. So we went there and... and it's COVID, so everyone's worried. Is it going to be a Halloween? What are we going to do, like kids? And so they had a little parade in the neighborhood. This is in Pigeon Point, which is like a cool little hill area. It's like it's a great little neighborhood. And so we go over to the parade. I had a mask on. I bought little like the axe that goes through the head. You know, it's on either side. Ah, love that classic. The, the kids loved it. They were like, it was mind blowing to them. They loved it. So we're all walking around. We got axes through our heads. I got a Jason mask, an old man mask, and. And by the way, when you go to a kid's Halloween parade, you got to stick close to the kids you're with. Because mm. if you if you f wander off, I'm just an old middle-aged guy with like a an old lady mask on, you know? Yeah, that's creepy. You don't want to be that guy. Just I had shopping. to keep being like, I had to keep being like, Joey, uh, there's, this is my nephew right here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But it was a great time. The neighborhood all came together. The kids were adorable. Some of the parents were hot. And then... We went back to uh, Derek's house. We sat in his driveway. We had these huge pumpkins we bought. We carved them all up good. He used a, a saw to carve them. We designed them up. There's, we had a spooky one, a silly one, a fun one, a shitty one. And there's a table. We had. He bought full-size candy bars. He's that guy. Wow. Fun dad. Full, full Milky Ways, full nut jobs, or whatever the fuck they're called, and hey, had like hey. a wooden tray. Yes, wooden oh. tray filled... And so then we sat there all day. I had my Jason mask. He had an axe through his head. We played the Ramones super loud. And the kids would come up, and I'd be like, full candy bar, best house on the block. We had a great time. I love and it. Wow, that's amazing. Talk about fun size, those little minis. That ain't fun. The big one, that's fun. That's what I say about my cock all the time to the kids. But And it was a full moon. It was a blood moon. or a, It was a blue moon. A blue moon. Uh, you know how beer. they say once in a blue moon. This was a blue moon. There was orange slices on it. And it was huge, and we had the whole view of the city. We sat there all night. It was the best Halloween I've ever had in my whole life. Wow. And there was a mo this is a fun moment. I'm sitting there talking to him, and he's drinking beers. He's got a buzz on. We're being goofs. I got to tell you about one guy you're going to hate. Two guys you're going to hate. Hey. One guy you're going to really hate. All right. So we order pizzas. We got a, a stack of pizzas. We're eating those. We're eating like shit. It's so fun. I had candy before pizza. Ooh. I felt like a kid. We're sitting there, and I go, boy, this, it doesn't happen often, but times like this is when I'd like to have a beer. Yes. I wouldn't mind having a nice beer. Here, here. Not beer, beer. Not two minutes later, some drunk lunatic walks up, bald, fat guy. He goes, whoa, this is the rock and roll house. No kids. He's oh. like, motherfuckers, this is a party right here. He's just screaming motherfucker. He's got no kids. He's an adult. He's like, 
Who's got the shots? You guys got shots of anything? Oh, where's this guy? Is he the, the dumb neighbor? I don't know who he is. He's a neighbor, but it was perfect timing because that would have been me. That would have uh, been me. I would have been jumping through the table and stealing the kids and, and fucking the candy. Silent so relapse. It was, it was perfect timing. I was like, ah, I wouldn't mind a beer. And then this asshole shows up, and I couldn't even hate him because I was like, that's me. That would be me. Yeah. The f- that's I'd true. I'd be 40 and bald. It's funny how that works because, uh, you know, Chris Al is sober and our opener, Mary Santora, was sober. So it I makes me mind my P's and Jews because I'm like, ah, I don't want to be that guy. I don't, you know, I start slurring and, blah, and I'm like, oh, these guys are sober as a judge, Judy. So I, 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 I kept it in line. Yeah, I love Mary. She's funny. I like her a lot. And Great then egg. Chris says, I'm, I'm off and on with, but. Fair. What can you do? But <clears throat> anyway, so that guy leaves. Then this guy shows up. Some fucking douche comes with two kids and just seems like a regular old guy. And he's like, oh, wow, you guys got big candy bars. I go, and it's late in the night. So we're going, take as many as you want. And then Derek goes, there's pizza, too. We finished the pizza if you want a slice. Just assuming no one's going to take a slice of pizza from people. And he goes, hey, what kind of pizza you got? And right away, I'm like, he's going to take the pizza? Hate this guy. Hate him. He opens the box. He takes three slices. One for him and one for each of his two daughters. Pepperoni slices. They're the last slices. What? We Who go is this over psycho? there. This guy's, the box is empty. This guy's a nightmare. He should be arrested. He took the last of our pizza. Can you believe that? I can't believe I, I mean, I, I'm in shock. Uh, I, I'm blown. I mean, it's like a Curb episode where you want to go, dude, we're kidding. You don't take pizza. I mean, and three... <laughs> Take one, and, and you guys eat it like Lady and the Tramp with your kids. Don't take three major slices. What are you, a fucking loon? Asinine. So then uh, Derek's wife comes home, and we're chat. We're telling him, like, some fucking asshole took the pizza. And, she, and, you know, moms are they're serious. You don't want to fuck with a mom. No, MILF, maybe. She's like, are you fucking kidding me? He took three slices. Yeah, three slices. We're, we're doing a triangle of, like, three slices. And the kids are like, they took our pizza? Ah! We have no pizza left? As we're saying it. He walks up. You just you just hear this, honey. This is the house that gave us the pizza. Oh. And she's like, "Oh, thank you." They came back around. They're listening to us. We're all trashing them. Well, they they need to hear it, baby. That you know who I, this guy is. He's the Noid. Remember him? He took your pizza. Who's the Noid? Man, he was the uh, uh, the Pizza Hut guy who would come in, or maybe Domino's. He would come in and steal pizza. That was like his thing. Oh well, they took my adenoids when I had my tonsillitis, but. This guy came and he, he kind of, I think he overheard it. I'm not sure, but he walked by and he goes, hey, thanks again for the pizza. And as he's leaving, Derek's got a little buzz on. He had the lighter, like the full, you know, those long lighters, the blue thing. Yeah. We got to click it and click. <laughs> as they left, he just threw it at them. I mean, pr- purposely short, but it hit the sidewalk and skidded. And they kind of looked back and looked at us. And I'm like, I had to like put my head down and walk in. I'm like, uh, what are you doing? You know, you had to <laughs> That's he's a funny guy. He's being kooky, but we tried to do the thing of like afterwards. You're like, shit. Did he know about the lighter? Did I throw that? I'm like, man, eh, maybe he thinks you dropped it. I'm like, I don't know why you would have somehow dropped it. But Derek didn't seem to care. He's like, ah, fuck him. He shouldn't have taken the pizza. But yeah, it's the hardest I've laughed in a while to just see a guy throw a lighter at a guy for <laughs> taking his pizza. But memorable night. I mean, the kids loved it. And then we went back inside, and I said, I don't care what you either your parents says. No asking permission for candy. Just tonight. If you want candy, you eat that son of a bitch. Funkle. We're eating candy. Yes. Funkle Joe. And we went nuts. And then it was 11 p.m. The bedtime's like 8 because they're fucking four years old. And I go, we're staying up to 11. We're having candy at 11. When the clock what? strikes 11, what? we're now, all having candy. Now you're taking over the house. These are, these are their children here. You can't make the rules. I'm making the rules. I'm Funkle Joe. So I stuffed candy up all their asses. We had a great time. The next day, they slept till like 2 in the afternoon. They were hung over and shit. Sure. Black but we on their mouth like they eat ass. It was fun. We had music rocking all night. I mean, we had a, a little dance party. We we're all candied out. And uh, best time of my life. I didn't want to leave. I wanted to move there. I want to move to Seattle and just be with these uh, these whippersnappers. Well, it was such a, a culture shock because you get to have like a residential area with a yard and, and neighbors and shit. It's, it's kind of nice. It's that suburban life with the family and the candy and the wife and the pizza guy. It's It's fun. It was a good time, great time, and uh, I mean, happy to be back, don't get me wrong, but uh, wonderful, wonderful time out there. I hope everybody had a safe and happy Halloween and uh, all that shit.
Yeah, we got Thanksgiving and turkey on the way. My brother just texted me we're having a vegan Thanksgiving, which feels like an oxymoron, but it's like having a Jewish Christmas. It doesn't work, but oh. we'll, we'll keep you posted on that one. Brian Vegan, I am not thankful for that. No, sorry, Bob. I'd rather, uh, you know, go the way of the Native American and just, you know, shoot me in the face with a musket. What was that gun? You ever see it like in the Bugs Bunny cartoons and Pilgrims? They had the gun with the barrel opens up at the end. Oh, yeah. What was that? Elmer Fudd had one, I think. Was that like a spray gun or something? I think that was like a, what do you, a Civil War gun? or it? Yeah, I think it, it was like a buckshot. Went, went spray. Yeah, it had like a cup at the end of it. Yes, yes. And then he would plug it with his two fingers and then the whole thing would blow up. Sometimes they'd tie it in a knot. That would be fun. Yes, big knot. What, what's That's up with sawed off? Uh, Why do they saw it off? I think it makes it uh, louder or more impactful or something. That's I'm not the sure. Baffle. But I remember, um, you know, Red Dawn. There's that great line where he's he's burning, he's cutting it off, and he's carving, and then the guy says, "All that hate's gonna burn you up, kid." And he says, "It keeps me warm." That Ooh. was like a big, that was a big moment in that one. We all like were like, "Oh yeah." It's kind of like a, a circumcision for a shotgun. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. Jews. All right, we got to wrap this thing up here. Yeah, what a what a what a week, what a day, what a night, what a life. I don't know. I got I got some stuff tomorrow night. I'm back in Royersford, uh, Pennsylvania. I'm bringing Renan Hirschberg and Steve Rogers. Maybe another guy. I'm not sure. Funny guys. Uh, good guys. Funny guys. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then Friday night, I'm in Millersville, Pennsylvania. <laughs> And that's with uh, Shafi Hossein, nice guy. He set it up for me and a uh, good guy. January 27th. Uh, January. <laughs> is November. It, is that Cat 20- Power? What is that called? Love Power? What do you mean? QAnon. What's that show called? The one in, in PA? Oh, Power Phantom. Pa- power Phantom Nap- Power. Phantom, Phantom power. power. Yes. Cat Power uh, hooked up with a friend of ours. Yeah, you got that right. You got some puss. Mm-hmm. November 27th, only concert, by the way, I've ever seen front row. I saw Cat Power up against the railing. It was pretty exciting. Ah, I didn't know you were depressed. <clears throat> November 20th, it was a festival. Don't ah. get me wrong. I didn't buy a ticket to see Cat Power. <laughs> uh, Friday, November 27th, I'm supposed to be at Gillette. I forget the name of it. Gillette Stadium's Comedy Club there. Um, supposed to be there. They're changing the rules. It's going to be a 4.30 show now because COVID comes out at night, I guess. So we have to be done by 10 o'clock. All right. Doesn't make sense, at, but I'll take it. And then January 8th through the 10th, it's a way, ways away. I'm at Helium in Philadelphia. God bless Philadelphia. I'll be at uh, Helium, my, my favorite city of all time, January 8th through the 10th with Sarah. And so come out to that. Oh, that'll be great. Oh, man, I'm excited. I'm uh I'm right behind you there, Fatty. I'm at I'm at the Comedy Zone in Greenville, South Carolina, this Thursday through Saturday. Not bragging. Come on out, SC. What the hell else are you doing? Uh, then I'll be in New Orleans for Thanksgiving, doing a show at Zony Burger Mash Bar on the 24th. Two shows. One's already sold out. So jump on that second show. That's on the 24th of November. Stress Factory in Bridgeport, Connecticut. This will be my last time I bother you about Connecticut because I've been there 800 times this uh, year. Spokane and Washington, come on out, Derek. But that's if it opens. It's uh, it's teetering. It's on the on the Mike Pence. And then uh, okay. Helium might open. We'll see. Uh, but, and then Side Splitters in Tampa for New Year's. But, yeah, all over, all over uh, New York and Jersey and whatnot. So uh, we'll figure it out. But say hello. Tell a friend. We're trying to get to 35 hundo on the Patreon. And uh, then we'll do a live, uh, two, what do you call it, YouTube stream, nonsense, questions, AMA, HPV, and uh, I think that'll do it. Yeah, hell yeah. Thanks for listening. We love you. We appreciate you, and especially the patrons, and uh, thanks so much. Thank you. Or just say cut it. Praise Allah. Blow your dad. Mm-hmm.